the eighth all-time meeting Oklahoma SMU and we are underway big hole opens up on the return out past the 25 up to the 32 yard line so good starting position for the Sooners for the first time we say hello to Tori Petri hello Sean we caught up with coach Venables and his staff earlier this week and Venables told us he acknowledges that they are fighting the burden of expectation on this program this season there's a lot of noise and pressure on them especially after the year they had last year but this week they are just looking at what's in front of them he said that they tell the players they have the elixir to solve the outside narrative and it's just to lock in that's the mindset they're heading into week two with Sean Thank you very much, Tori. We look forward to hearing from you throughout the course of tonight's game. Oklahoma starts from the 31-yard line. They'll try to get this ground game going. First touches to Marcus Major over the right side. We get tempo here early, something we saw a lot of last week, and this will be featured throughout for the Sooners. Two of the fastest offenses in college football showcased here tonight. First throw of the day by Gabriel through the hands of the Michigan transfer, Andrew Anthony. Third and short here. Gabriel last week, like we touched on, just three incompletions over 300 yards passing and a dominant performance in week one. He only played a half of football. Jackson Arnold brought it home in the second half and was equally impressive. The talented freshman from Denton, Texas. Third down for the Sooners, third and four. Gabriel from the gun looks, fires, and the pass is caught. A sliding grab by Anthony. This will move the sticks in a sooner third down conversion. Good catch from Andre Anthony paired up against Chris McGinson on the outside Liberty transfer. A couple of former Liberty Flames following their coordinator to SMU during this offseason. Good TFL there. Jonathan McGill, speaking of transfers, he came all the way over from the West Coast, Stanford captain. And that's something to pay attention to for this SMU defense, the screen game for Oklahoma. They're so efficient in it, have to tackle well in the open field. Loss of three on the play. This will be major, not much. Lost the football late. Ball popped loose, but they're going to say he was down. Elijah Roberts pouncing on it, the hit coming. Brian Massey coming downhill with authority. Take a look right Ruling here. Ruling on the field as the runner was down prior to the ball coming loose. Third down. And that is close as to whether that left knee was down. OU back on the ball with more tempo. Sooner's not going to let this go upstairs for a challenge. They swing it out to the flats too far out in front of Major, and SMU will force the punt. And that's the exact start this SMU defense was hoping for. The drop on second down I thought was impactful on the opening possession. Dialed up pressure there on the defensive side, got after Dylan Gabriel and gets this defense off the field. Josh Plaster was called on to punt only once last week. The Sooners scoring on 11 of their 12 possessions. Line drive kick, special teams coverage by OU. The Sooners flying to the football. That's Kip Lewis. First one downfield for the Sooners special teams. And it looks like he might have jarred his right arm or shoulder. So here comes Preston Stone, the young sophomore from Dallas, Texas, Parrish High School, hometown product, grew up in the Dallas area, wanted to play for SMU, sat behind Tanner Mordecai, ironically, the former Sooner signal caller. In this day and age when players just lose patience if they don't play right away, that was not the case with Preston Stone. Big R.J. Maryland in motion, and they will try to get their rushing attack going inside the tackles, and you feel this is a key area for the Ponies tonight. Absolutely, running between the tackles, as we alluded to, tempo for both of these offenses. SMU back on the ball quickly. Don't blink tonight. You might miss a couple of plays. For the first time, airborne pass caught. Moochie Dixon shreds off a couple of would-be defenders. He'll pick up 12 in a first down. And a nice job by Moochie Dixon working back to the ball. It was good coverage on the back end. We have a Sooner defender down, but I liked Moochie Dixon Time working back to the football. Player. Time out on the field for an injured player. 
Injury timeout. More than two minutes into this opening quarter. Preston Stone last week very efficient. 23 of 37, 248 yards. They jumped out to such a large lead. They led Louisiana Tech 31 0 at halftime. So Brett Lashley really went conservative in the second half and it didn't unleash the entire arsenal of play. That's exactly right. But offensive coordinator Casey Woods talked this week about how he wanted them to start even faster. It took till the third drive for SMU to get a touchdown on the board. Struggled in their first two drives of that game and that was an emphasis. They wanted to come out and start fast, try and get points on the board on their opening drive. See the concern around the injured sooner Gentry Williams the starting cornerback who is certainly going to be a key here tonight with the plethora of weapons that SMU has on the edge Williams the sophomore from Tulsa it's a very young secondary when you look at the players behind Woody Washington and Gentry Williams Three true freshmen in the mix, straight up the middle on a quick hitter. This was one of the only areas last week that I felt like SMU struggled some, was running between the tackles. They did a nice job getting on the perimeter, but that's an emphasis here today, trying to move this big Oklahoma defensive line around. That's going to be a challenge for this SMU front. L.J. Johnson, the transfer. Texas A&M, he is the running back. He led the Mustangs last week on the ground, had over 100 yards, 67 on one gallop. Here's a bomb downfield, receiver open, and Stone overshot him. He had Roderick Daniels, the speedster, behind the Sooner secondary. He absolutely did, and Preston Stone, this ball gets away from him because he's working to the left. You've got to try and pull as a quarterback, pull him to the goalpost. This, because he's working to the left, that ball fades, puts a little bit too much on it. That's a big missed opportunity for this SMU offense. Third down defense, a priority this offseason for Oklahoma. Last week, so successful. Let's see if they come after Stone. Here they come. Linebackers fire in. High throw, incomplete. Coverage on the play by Kanai Walker go back to just how big that overthrow was there on second down for the Oklahoma defense they had a shutout last week it was a dominant performance but there were some missed opportunities for Arkansas State on deep balls that were just incomplete we wondered if SMU would be able to connect on those they missed there on a big explosive play opportunity on that second down Ryan Buchevsky on the punt Explosive Gavin Freeman awaiting the kick. Freeman took one to the house last week. Here comes the rush, and they get a piece of it. The pun is blocked, and the Sooner special teams come up big here in the first quarter. What a momentum play for Oklahoma early in this game. They brought pressure off of the left side. See who gets a piece of it. Looked like number 22, Peyton Bowen, got that right hand in there. What a big play for the Sooners early in this in this first quarter. Peyton Bowen, we talked about the youth for Oklahoma in the secondary. He's a true freshman from Denton. The backup safety with an impact play and now excellent starting position for Gabriel and the Sooners. And it's going to be Jackson Arnold who is in there. So we see Gabriel on the first set and now it is the freshman Arnold getting the call. Interesting to see him early in the game. He was effective last week as well. Perfect 11 of 11 throwing the ball also added almost 40 yards on the ground as we see Dylan Gabriel come back in. It is interesting that we get a chance to see Jackson Arnold so early in this game. They're going to line Arnold way out wide as a receiver here, and a big hole opens up over the center. Andrew Rame, the veteran of this Sooner offensive line, he opened up a gaping hole. And Tawee Walker, the walk-on, Kind of a surprise last week with his workload, but he's earned it talking to these Sooner coaches. It's interesting that Jackson Arnold 
obviously in for both of those plays some wrinkles here we're seeing that obviously we're not put on tape last week against Arkansas State. Sooners go with a bunch over the middle. It's Anthony wide open for six. Special teams coming up big, given a short field. Oklahoma capitalizes on offense. Goes back to just how important that special teams unit is for this Sooners team. Get another look. It's a bust on the back end. Man coverage by this defense, and he just gets turned loose. Looked like Ahmad Moses. Two went with one. And Anthony was left wide open. Andrell Anthony in his first year. Coming in via Ann Arbor and a player that Michigan desperately did not want to lose, but the Sooner is able to bring him in via the transfer portal. A receiving core that lost their top three receivers from a year ago headlined by Marvin Mims they were looking for a playmaker and they think they have found one with Andrell Anthony special team setting it up Gabriel to Anthony and the Sooners fire the opening salvo Oklahoma firing first taking advantage of the block punt the Sooners strike via the airwaves 7 nothing OU 1039 to go here in this first quarter Hey, Sooner fans, get your tickets now for the final four home games of the 2023 season. Check out Soonersports.com or call 1-800-456-GO-OU for more information. Dylan Gabriel with his third touchdown pass on this young season. Andrew Anthony finding the end zone for the first time wearing the crimson and cream. Zach Schmidt, high end over end kick, and it sails through the end zone for the touchback. This drive summary brought to you by Fowler Auto Group. Being friendly, helpful, honest, and fair, this is what drives us. Oklahoma goes three plays, 40 yards. They take advantage of the block punt. Special teams play by Peyton Bowen. Minute four off the clock, the touchdown pass, Gabriel to Anthony. First down, SMU trying to establish this ground game with Jalen Knighton. And that's the type of four yard chunk that SMU needs to stay ahead of the sticks. Helps out their quarterback with second and third and medium. A lot of weapons for offensive coordinator Casey Woods. Stone looking for that deep ball along the far side. He will launch, but the receiver well out of bounds. That was Knighton trying to hit that wheel route out of the backfield. And so good on the back end by Woody Washington. The corner stays at home. This is designed by this SMU offense to try and hit that wheel route up the sideline. Woody Washington, really good disciplined eyes. Sniff that play out. Big third down opportunity for the Sooners. Longtime defensive coordinator Ted Roof, of course, Brent Venables, and all of his success as a defensive coordinator prior to taking the job here in Soonerland. So creative with their schemes. Six up on the line, they'll rush five, pressure comes, Stone floats, caught in stride, hits Romello Brinson, and the Mustangs convert on third down. What a pretty throw from Preston Stone. That's part of what makes Preston Stone so good. He's stepping up on the move and drops a dime 40 yards downfield. He loves to throw the deep ball, certainly his strength, and he's going to put that arm to a test, and he hits Jake Bailey in stride. Bailey down to the 10, 32 yards, and just like that, SMU cooking. They have it inside the Sooner Red Zone. Billy Bowman Jr. can't believe he doesn't have an interception right now. Jake Bailey stepped right in front of him at the last second to make that play. SMU keeps the foot on the gas. Quick throw, nearly intercepted. Billy Bowman, speaking of the junior, Hard-hitting, strong safety, nearly had the pick. Comes back, gets some redemption on that play. This is a touchdown if he doesn't get that right hand up.
two big completions on this drive for Stone and this offense, one of the best in the country a year ago, coming right back at Oklahoma. Previous play is under further review for targeting. All right, so they are going to go upstairs and take a look at a possible targeting call that we missed initially, so we're anxious to see what they're taking a look at here. We didn't see an initial reaction involving Preston Stone. I'm not sure if this was in the interior or where this came from. While we wait on a look for where this potential targeting may come from, what an impressive drive in response for SMU, that shot play on third down to extend that drive. Those deep ball opportunities are going to be there for SMU. Here's another look. And this is taking a look at Preston Stone. Danny Stutzman, the teeth of this Oklahoma defense as he came right in underneath the chin guard there and I think Stone. Uh, you're exactly right and I think the piece that they're really going back to look at is at the last second it looks like Stutzman may lower that helmet and that's the piece that is really the emphasis of this rule trying to avoid and it's designed to protect the defensive player but avoid that crown of the helmet where we see so many injuries come from. Boy Taylor this is a pivotal pivotal moment in this football game. Stutzman, the leader on what is a very young defensive unit for OU, the heart and soul of this linebacking core. And right now, some tense moments if you're a Sooner waiting for the verdict. No doubt, an emotional leader of this defense, also an ESPN top 100 player in college football. This is a very important piece to this defense. After review, there is no foul for targeting. It's still second down. And I wondered if it looked like it was right at that, you know, the edge of the neck and the, the bottom of the face mask of Preston Stone. Thought maybe it was right on the edge. Sooner fans obviously happy. Danny Stutzman staying in this game. Talked about what an impactful leader he is on this defensive unit. Stutzman led the Big 12 a year ago in tackles. Teaming up with Jaron Kanick, the two linebackers on the inside of this Oklahoma defense. Second down and 10, SMU on the march. Quick hitter as a lid flies off. Big hit put on that time by Ethan Downs. Justin Harrington was in the neighborhood as well. And Captain Justin Harrington is the overhang to the field side. He's unblocked comes in and makes a big play. I thought SMU had that stack tight end in there that I thought maybe would be responsible for Justin Harrington. He ends up going unblocked and creates a big stop. Sets up a third and long again for SMU. Keep an eye on big number 82 in the white, RJ Maryland. He is an enormous red zone target. Stone, Sooners with a stunt over the middle, too tall, incomplete. Dixon the target, good coverage by Billy Bowman. Really nice coverage by Billy Bowman and a nice job by Oklahoma. Give up a couple chunk plays, get down into the red zone, but they stand firm. Billy Bowman maybe getting away with a little bit of a hold there around the hip. Thought just a little bit out of the reach of Moochie Dixon. But again, credit to this Sooners defense getting off the field and holding SMU to just a field goal. It's a tough week last week for the sophomore Colin Rogers, one of three, and he was so reliable a year ago in his true freshman season. Placement down, kick on the way, and it is good, and SMU is on the board. Rogers from 27 yards out. Lashley wanted six. He'll settle for three. Sooners with the lead here in the first. Eisman Park adjacent to Gaylord family. Oklahoma Memorial Stadium where we are situated on a gorgeous, gorgeous Saturday night here in Norman, Oklahoma. Ooh. 
We told you this was going to be a buckle up type game. Six minutes into it, 131 total yards, 21 plays, all four possessions, under two minutes. It has lived up to the hype early in this game. Both defenses, though, they've showed some teeth as well, gotten some stops. We'll see what Oklahoma they had the initial opening drive. No points on that one. Create a big play on special teams. Quick drive for a touchdown. Can they repeat that success on their third drive of this first quarter? Blake Smith in the backfield as an H back. Marcus Major. They play fake it to Major. Pocket collapsing and Gabriel is tackled. There is a flag down in the Sooner backfield as well. Vicinity of a hole. Holding number 75. Offense, 10 yard penalty. Still first down. Taylor, an offensive line that lost their two starting tackles from a year ago to the NFL, and both, both Morris and Harrison. So in steps Walter Rouse, the big transfer from Stanford. And he did some nice things last week, but there were a couple mistakes when you look on tape. He got beat a couple times where he got out of position, and that's the exact same thing that just happened here. Gave up the outside, pulled just a little bit, got caught for it, and sets Oklahoma back. After the penalty, pressure up the middle. Gabriel floats. He's going to tuck and run, and he is slid into on the backside by Elijah Chapman. One of the things I'm most impressed by with Dylan Gabriel is when he decides he's going to take off, he goes. There's not any dancing around. He's decisive, gets vertical, makes one cut, gets what he can get, and then gets down. It's a part of his game that a lot of people really don't appreciate. They know about his accuracy and his arm, but very dangerous with his feet. Offensive coordinator Jeff Levy told us yesterday in our meetings that Marcus Major was the guy that they were really going to work to get into the flow of this game in the first half, and he's seen the majority of the carries so far. Well, both of those plays there making up a lot of that penalty yard and getting to a third and medium as SMU tries to shuffle some people off. Watch for screen game here or the shallow cross game. Third down and six. Pressure up the middle and they get to him. Chapman with back to back plays. Gabriel sacked. And the Sooners to punt for the second time in this first quarter. All conference returning starter, one of the captains in the middle. He just wins at the point of attack. He beat Savion Bird, the left guard. SMU was going to have to answer the bell on defense. Did not want this to turn into a track meet against Oklahoma. That's a big stop there for the Ponies. This SMU defense last week was six sacks. A team that had only 27 sacks a year ago. Good punt, having some trouble with it, still loose. Roderick Daniels able to pounce on it. 43 yard punt. And this SMU offense getting ready to go back to work. 6.40 to go here in the first quarter, near miss. Here on the special teams, that's been a little shaky for the Mustangs here in this first quarter. Entertaining first quarter, Oklahoma with a 7-3 lead. Gabriel, the touchdown pass to Anthony. Short field goal by Colin Rogers, and that's been the offense so far. Block punt. Uh, the OU special teams unit setting up the lone Sooner score. SMU from their own 34, pressure off the edge, flag will fly, holding call coming. Sooners that time able to generate some pressure off the edge with P.J. Adibaroe. Holding number 82, offense, 10-yard penalty. It's still first down. They love this freshman providing some depth on the edge for OU. RJ Maryland from the tight end spot. Same thing, gets the hands just too far outside. Now first and 20 coming out for SMU. First penalty on 
the Mustangs here tonight. Stone working behind the sticks. First and long. And they will hand it off to Roderick Daniels. This is their versatile player. They can use him all over. They used him in the backfield at times a year ago. He was in the receiver meeting rooms as well. Real weapon for them. And trouble at right guard with Justin Osborne, who was faced down on the turf. The 314 pound senior back after an injury plagued season a year ago. To see Justin Osborne down at that right guard spot, that's somebody this SMU staff talked about leaning on in that interior run game. Going back to Roger Daniels being brought in, he really is the Swiss Army knife for this offense where they move him around. You see they bring him back in motion into the backfield and then run him between the tackles. The other guy that you'll see featured between the tackles, LJ Johnson, and then a lot of the perimeter running goes to Jalen Knighton. But SMU is a feature here trying to get the run game, especially on first down. You get a lot of that out of this SMU offense as we get another look. I think he got yeah, rolled up on man on the left side there. You hope that's obviously hope it's nothing major. Osborne has been so durable throughout his time. Back last year, missing the UC, uh, USF game, he had started Consecutive games over the first couple of years of his career really a reliable source on the inside So you hope the big guy is going to be okay At that right guard position. They're a little banged up on the offensive line Ben Sparks was a question mark coming into this game the backup Offensive guard Cam Urban who missed last week. He too was a question mark coming into it like they move Ben Sparks over to that right guard position. Oh, bag of tricks here as they started the snap with Daniels on one knee and he took it right from the center Hickman but it doesn't really fool the OUD. And it's Danny Stutzman on the right side of your screen. Watch big 28 right there. Not fooled at all. There's been a couple concepts SMU's tried to scheme up early. We called out Woody Washington staying home on the wheel route. Nice job in pursuit and staying home by Danny Stutzman there. Here comes this crowd inside Memorial Stadium. Stone with a pocket, fires short of the sticks. Hauled in by Bailey, tackled immediately by Key Lawrence, shy of the first down. So much post-snap movement from these safeties. They end up almost in a Tampa 2 look in center field. A nice job by that secondary rallying around the football and again getting this Sooner defense off the field. Second punt of the night for Brzezewski. Three men awaiting the kick at his own 15. Rugby style kick, line drive, knuckleball. Freeman catches at the 15, changes direction, trying to get to the outside. And a good open field tackle is made. It's Isaiah. Okobia led this team with six tackles a week ago. The first one flying downfield from his gunner position. First down is brought to you by Paycom. Score big by letting employees do their own payroll. Learn more at Paycom.com. It's really been an interesting first quarter in the fact that these two offenses, they've, they've had a couple of big plays, but I wouldn't say either one of them have found their rhythm. No doubt, and, and doesn't it feel like one or both of these units feels like they're ready to explode? Like it's right there, opportunities there to be made in both offenses. It's been some penalties, a little bit of sloppy play, but here soon you're gonna see one or both of these offenses really break out. 
carrying the football with both hands is Major. Good job submarining inside Jaquandis Burns. I've been impressed early in this game with SMU's ability to contain the running game of Oklahoma. Keeping it between the tackles, it's really just been two and three yard gains. They haven't given up the chunk play on the ground yet. Sooners averaging only three yards per carry on eight rush attempts. Here's a quick throw, a little hitch pattern. Anthony has been the weapon tonight. His third catch and a first down. And a nice job by Andre Anthony leaning forward for the first down. He was at the 29 yard line short of the sticks, but leans forward, picks up that last yard. Sooners go bunch, little shovel toss. Anthony makes the catch and he is sandwiched between a couple of Mustang defenders. Good job converging on the explosive back. Oklahoma with more tempo. They tag that screen, the slip out into almost all of their run game. SMU staying at home early. Looking left, looking right, nothing there. Gabriel says, I'll take off and run, lowers the pads, finishes off his run as McGill came flying up from safety. And Brandon Crossley had Dylan Gabriel dead to rights. Watch this move on the left side of your screen as Dylan Gabriel right here sticks that foot in the ground and makes a good tackler miss in Brandon Crossley. Crossley doesn't miss too many of those. A lot of experience, fourth-year player for SMU. Now you see the Sooners after picking up the first down, slowing up the tempo a little bit. Freeman goes in motion. Gabriel patiently waiting. It did not look like Freeman was on the same page. Yeah, just a bust there, clearly. It was either Freeman, outside receiver, they had some sort of screen game set up and both engaged to block. Just a busted play there for the Sooners. Second down throw, a bit behind Freeman. Ball up in the air, Massey and McGill converge as it falls incomplete. Drake stoops there on the drop. Not somebody that you normally see drops. He's one of the more sure handed receivers on this unit. Just gets into his body. Stoops left the game last week toward the tail end of the first quarter with a shoulder injury. He wanted to check back into the game, but the coaches held him out with Oklahoma handling Arkansas State. Third down, Massey comes on a blitz. They pick it up beautifully, but the throw is offline. Looking for LV Bunkley Shelton. And again, another miscommunication with this wide receiver group and Dylan Gabriel. LV Bunkley Shelton, this is a simple curl route. He needs to work back to the quarterback. Instead, almost works more towards the sideline. And I think Dylan Gabriel expected him to be coming back towards the quarterback off just a little bit, but it's those little things ends up getting this Sooners offense off the field. Third punt here in this first quarter by Plaster. Beautiful kick. Bearcats signal four at the 12. 46 yard punt. Let's go back downstairs to Torrey. Sean Preston Stone isn't the only stone out here on the field right now. His brother Parker is actually a student assistant on this staff. Preston told me that Parker is one of his best friends in the world, and it's nice to have him in the program with him, too. He used to play, and now he has joined the staff. He's really taken a liking to coaching, and he said that he could see his brother pursuing this as a career. Their dad, Ted, is also an SMU grab. Parents live just about 15 minutes from campus, and Preston told me that the mom, Jerry, coordinates both sons coming home for family dinners when their schedules allow. Yeah, it certainly is, Tori, a football family. Another brother, Lindell, a quarterback at UVA. A lot of football talk in the Stone household. Deep in the shadows of his own end and a little bit of breathing room as LJ Johnson finds a crevice. SMU sticking to that first down run game. Again, it's so important for your young quarterback to stay ahead of the sticks with good chunk run plays. They set up the screen to Bailey. They'll pick up the first down. Bailey up to the 25-yard line. Peyton Bowen the tackle. Well, here we are, Taylor, deep into this first quarter. Any surprises thus far from your perspective? Nothing yet other than OU was so clean in the opener against Arkansas State. And in this one, it just feels a little bit off. Some of its penalties, 
miscommunication on some of the routes that we saw on that last drive, not as clean early as we saw last week. Stone rockets a pass. Bailey yards after catch. Up to the 40, 15 more yards, and another Mustang first down. Jake Bailey looks crisp early in this game. You can tell he and Preston Stone are on the same page, and he's in the right spot and on time for his quarterback. Bailey was such a weapon at Rice in that slot receiver position. Johnson gets two. First quarter winding down. Sooners with a 7-3 lead. Stone off his back foot again as his man. Boy, Jake Bailey, his third catch on this drive will be about a yard shy of the first down. Let's see if SMU wants to get one more playoff. Does not look like they will have the time to do it. There is a, a sooner behind the play, slow to get back to his bench, so that's why the clock stopped there. Looks like R. Mason Thomas, slow to come off the field. Got an official's timeout, now winding the clock. I think that'll just be the end of the quarter. Mason Thomas, a sophomore from Fort Lauderdale, getting attended to. First quarter in the books. The eighth all-time meeting between these two universities separated by less than three hours. Oklahoma special teams, the block punt, the touchdown pass to Anthony. Sooners by four after one. Welcome back to Sooner Vision Football on ESPN Plus, presented by Mathis Home, the official furniture sponsor of OU Athletics. Upgrade your palace and shop now at MathisHome.com. First quarter that featured the two teams combining for 40 plays, 20 for SMU, 20 for Oklahoma. Over 200 yards of offense, yet still four punts. And now third and short for Stone and the Mustangs. Power football up the middle, and LJ Johnson onto the Sooner side of the field. SMU stayed true to their keys. If they need short yardage, and it's between the tackles, LJ Johnson was the guy last week, and he's been the guy so far early in this game. Johnson carried the ball 14 times last week for 128 yards. Jalen Knighton was used early in the game. Tyler Levine was their big bruiser. He was utilized on third down situations. Kamar Wheaton, a speedster and the sophomore from Garland, is suited up. He was suspended last week, so plenty of depth in this backfield for offensive coordinator Casey Woods and head coach Brett Lashley. Injured sooner on that last play is Justin Harrington as they work on his left leg. One of the captains of this team. Going back to that last play, man, I love watching the corner, Gentry Williams. He's a physical corner. He came down, not afraid to stick his nose in there in the run game. That was always my favorite for our corners. When they would get in the mix on run game, I was so impressed by guys like Gentry Williams. That was something that Brent Venables talked about was the physicalness that Williams brought. He was fearless on the film they watched from high school. They played him all over at Booker T. Powerhouse program. He was a great athlete. Just a credit to him and his instincts. But he was a skinny athlete who just tackled so aggressively. Certainly has brought that to the OU secondary. We'll keep an eye out on Harrington to see if he's able to get back in there. Second down give, trying to zigzag over the left side is Belton Gardner. Running back, we did not even talk about. We were going through those options that they have in the backfield, but Gardner has a lot of experience, started his career at Kansas. And, and even in unfavorable looks, right there, Oklahoma had six in the box and walked down a seventh. Seven in the box, and SMU is still committing to running between the tackles. in mind Rhett Lashley one of the more aggressive coaches in football this might be four down territory for the Mustangs 
SMU two of five on third down. The right-hander twirls it toward the sideline, incomplete, looking for the tight end, Maryland. And R.J. Maryland's just got to throttle down there. He runs himself out of bounds. Preston Stone, good job scrambling, extending the play. Watch at the top of your screen. R.J. Maryland's taking himself out of bounds. Even if he catches that ball, still a yard short. That's where you want to just throttle down. And you called it. Offense staying on the field, fourth and medium. And they'll go with a little pooch kick there from Stone. Nicely done by Preston Stone. Well, he's showing a little bit of versatility. That was perfect execution by that unit. Pinning Oklahoma deep inside their 10 yard line. They brought him in to throw footballs all over the place. He can certainly do that, but a little pooch kick from Stone pins the Sooners deep. We'll take a look at this list. The last six starting quarterbacks here at Oklahoma. Mayfield, Murray, Hurts, Rattler, Williams, and now Dylan Gabriel. Yeah, I don't think there's a program in the last 10 years that's been better than Oklahoma at the quarterback position, and that includes the Alabamas, the Ohio States of the world. Year over year, it just feels like they reload and have a guy that year in and year out, one of the best quarterbacks in the country. Worst starting position on the night for Oklahoma as they will hand the ball off. And this is Walker with a little bit of space up to the 15-yard line, close to a first down. McGill, the tackle. Good patient running, wasn't there on the right side. Bounced it to the left, picks up nine. Sooners lined up, ready to go, and a big collision over the left side. Walker with a first down carry. And I like this when you're backed up. You've been stopping and starting through the first quarter, through your first few possessions. Get back to the basics, run the ball effectively, get back to some of those basic plays that we saw them hit, some of the screen games, the easy completions for Dylan Gabriel that they were so successful with last week. First down throw and catch, it's Anthony. Solid first half, five catches for over 50 yards, including the touchdown for Andrell Anthony. He has been the guy early in this game for Dylan Gabriel. Feels like they're in a really nice rhythm to start this game. 12-yard completion, Oklahoma just like that, creating a little bit of breathing room. Keeping it. Faking the jet sweep, Gabriel up the middle. Good open field tackle by Jalen Samuels. Continuing to stay on schedule, no negative plays yet in this drive. Good, simple pull read, and I like that Dylan Gabriel got down there at the end, avoided the big hit. So Gabriel's number, six of 11, 53 yards. Look at this effort, just willing his way ahead. Tawi Walker and an offense that maybe is looking for a boost as far as the physicality goes and Walker with three impressive touches on this drive and this offensive line is just leaning on SMU look at that push I mean that's a good three yards of push from this sooner offensive line to pick up another first down Timeout taken by SMU. Good timeout utilized by SMU has called their first charge timeout of the half. Good timeout time out utilized the field. by Lashley. Maybe realizing his guy is bending a little bit more than he wants. He'll try to slow down the momentum. 26 to go, second quarter, 7-3 Oklahoma. Pretty clean game so far. Another team with a turnover. Each team with just one penalty. SMU has the one sack. A lot of people thought this might be a shootout, but it's been the two defenses which certainly have shined brightly. Coach Bob Stutes in attendance. Proud dad tonight watching his son Drake out there. SMU taking that last time out. Trying to slow it down a little bit. First down brought to you by Paycom. Score big by letting employees do their own payroll. Learn more at Paycom.com. 
So Taylor really for the first time tonight, the Sooners with a little bit of life on the ground. Compliments of Tawi Walker. Yeah, Jeff Levy's made it real clear on this drive. They're going to do one thing, and that's establish the physicality on the offensive line. They're running the ball right at SMU right now. Going right back to work. Yards after contact, getting to the sideline as Walker finally shoveled out of bounds at the 26. All night. So far, SMU had bottled up the run game where they weren't giving up any of the chunk plays. This is the first one. Good, tough running by Tawi Walker. Breaks it to the outside, and that's that chunk play on the ground. The Jeff Levy and the staff talked about going to have to establish that, hit some of those against SMU. Walker, really a great story. Took a year off of football to raise his son. Started his collegiate career at a junior college from the West Coast in Palomar. Gabriel throws over the middle. He threads the needle. Jalil Farouk with his first catch, and the Sooners are in the red zone. And a good job by Farouk setting that route down. There was a defender in his way. Instead of running to get covered, throttled it down in zone coverage. 11 yards, and now it's Javante Barnes, and he gets taken up. Up into the air, Jalen Davis Robinson coming in low with a submarine tackle from his corner position. This type of drive is what we saw last week against Arkansas State, where Oklahoma just methodically March down the field, no negative plays. That's really been what we've seen on this drive so far. Walker flanking Gabriel to his left, and this is Walker following his big left tackle, Walter Rouse. Boy, the big plow just moved everybody out of the way, and you can just see Walker following big number 75, Shadow. And back on the ball quickly. Third down and short, Walker up the middle with a surge, and it's first and goal, Oklahoma. These are the drives when you're a defense that just wear you down. You know what's coming. Oklahoma's just running right at them, and SMU doesn't have an answer for it right now. Stogner, the tight end right, up the gut they go, and this time SMU stiffens up at the point of attack. Nelson Paul, the first one to crash down, along with the Miami transfer, Elijah Roberts, second and goal. Interesting to see what this second down call is with effective, as effective as they have been running the ball. In my mind, if I'm Jeff Levy, you keep it on the ground. Now you've got Marcus Major checked into the game. I think you continue to run right at SMU. Plenty of downs to play with on the two-yard line. We'll see if they just keep running right at SMU. Anthony to the receiver left. Nick Anderson's checked into the right. In motion in the backfield is Smith. The left-hander throws. Touchdown. They find Blake Smith. It's a Sooner six. That's the answer that this offense needed after a little bit of a slow start. Marched all the way down the field from their own six-yard line. Capped off by a beautiful play design. Scheme, Blake Smith open. Cap off a 94-yard drive for the Sooners. A massive 13 play drive by Oklahoma. Good mix of run and pass. Walker providing the spark. Schmidt adds the point after. Blake Smith grew up in South Lake, Texas. Oftentimes, he would go to Oklahoma games in middle school while his big sister was enrolled here at OU. Started his career at Texas A&M. He has found a home here in Norman. Sooners up 11. Sooner Vision Football on ESPN Plus is brought to you by Rip Crib, smoking the good stuff. And by Mathis Home, the official furniture sponsor of OU Athletics. Oh, a state-of-the-art facility here in Oklahoma. This drive summary brought to you by Fowler Auto Group. Being friendly, helpful, honest, and fair, this is what drives us. And after three punts in this first half, the Sooners put it all together. A monster 13-play, 94-yard drive. Nearly five minutes off the game clock, and the big spark coming from Walker with his physical running. Let's go back down the torque. Yeah, we were keeping an eye on Justin Harrington down here. They did take him into the medical tent and looked at him for just a few minutes in there. But after that, he returned to the bench area, got in that defensive huddle on the bench, and he's back out there on the field now, guys. 
All right, thank you very much, Tori. Certainly a key player, part of that cheetah position, Justin Harrington. That hybrid linebacker safety, the senior from Raleigh. Key drive if you're SMU. Stone gets rid of it quickly, finds a little bit of a hole in that zone. Minimal gain of four up to the 29. Maryland with his first catch. Prior to that last drive, really a pretty balanced game. SMU with over 140 yards total offense. Just three points to show for it right now. Second down, this is Knighton, and he is tripped up just as he was getting ready to get a burst. Billy Bowman, sure tackler from safety, coming up to win run support. Billy Bowman will bring the hat. That guy comes down and announces his presence with authority. Jumps out on Young Tape. Third and short. Up the middle they go, and I don't think he got there. This is going to be really close. I don't think he did either. About a half yard short. I think it's interesting also leaving Jalen Knighton in the game. That's the guy we talked about traditionally. Well, Keep him on the perimeter. Short of the line of game. Tend to lean on LJ Johnson on short yardage and in between the tackles. And now you see the offense stay on the field on fourth down. Crowd becoming a factor here as well. Deafening now inside Memorial Stadium. Venables frantically trying to communicate his defense. Fourth and a yard. They float it. Wheel route. Knighton makes the catch and a first down. A gutsy roll of the die by Rhett Lashley. And the Mustangs convert. Jared Canick from the middle linebacker spot looked like they weren't on the same page. Billy Bowman as well was walked down on the line of scrimmage. And between Bowman and Canick, somebody turned loose the running back spot. And Jalen Knighton, a huge conversion there for this SMU offense. Miscommunication, a killer there for the Sooners. Down 11, hostile environment, confident in your offense, and Lashley did not hesitate. First down, SMU at the Sooner 47. Far hash, pressure up the middle, Stone darts it over the middle, and it's a bit behind LJ Johnson incomplete. A little pressure in his face. Preston Stone doing a nice job giving ground, trying to buy as much time as he can. They're fortunate there. O.J. Johnson didn't have his head around. Fortunate that wasn't an interception. Stone in this first half, 9 of 16 for 130 yards. You feel a deep shot is coming. This would be the part of the field to try it. Play clock down the three. Stone wanted to go deep. Fires toward the sideline. Nothing there. Good coverage. Walker was in the vicinity as he had pinched Dixon along the sideline. And it was good coverage. You nailed that. They tried to run a two-man concept into the boundary. Oklahoma sniffed it out. Nowhere to go with the football. Now at third and long, this is the part of the field we've already seen SMU go for it on fourth down more than once. If they can pick up anything here, I think you would see them go for it again. Also, remember, we saw the quick kick from Preston Stone again. That's in the bag for this SMU offense as well. A lot of pre-snap movement by OU. Design draw. Stone trying to show his agility. Stretches ahead inside the 40. Tackle by Bowen. Big brother nods a little quiet, confident. That's all right. Good game. Fourth and manageable. See if that's enough for SMU to pull the trigger on actually going for it here. Or do we see another quick kick? SMU frantically trying to get time a timeout out. before the SMU, delay of game, and Lashley is able to Let's get the timeout call. Timeout. Wonder if crowd had anything to do with that that played any sort of impact. 
I thought they come back out in a similar formation. SMU, just like Oklahoma, a really solid screen team. I thought they had numbers to the field. That's something we really haven't seen as much of from SMU so far in this game. Hey, Sooner fans, be sure to get your tickets now for the final four home games of the 2023 season. Check out Soonersports.com or call 1-800-456-GO-OU for more information. What do you like here, Taylor? Fourth and short if you're Lashley and Woods in this SMU offense. Yeah, I think you keep it in the hands of Preston Stone. The shallow cross concept, we've seen a lot of man coverage from Oklahoma. I like that. Get it into the hands of a guy like a Jake Bailey who's really good, open in space. I think that's something if I'm a quarterback like a Preston Stone, that's what I would be dialing up here. Sooners rush four pass drop Canick might have got a hand in there they were looking for Maryland and the Sooner defense takes over on downs nice job by the Sooners giving a little bit of ground but flexing there on another fourth down stop huge stand for the Sooners 14 3 from Norman Aaron Gabriel with a couple of Touchdown passes here in this first half. Sooner defense forcing a stop. The old fourth down by SMU. Gabriel's numbers, the two touchdowns. One to Anthony, one to his tight end, Smith. And now you take a look at game situation, Taylor. 5.15 to go, first half, obviously. Time not a factor, but let's see how the Sooners elect to play it around midfield. Yeah, if you're Oklahoma, you'd love to try and bleed this down in this half with points and try and limit SMU's ability to have an answer before half. Maybe one of those rare occasions where they slow it up as a flag flies. This play blown up really from the get-go. Looked like OU had a couple of guys moving at the same time. Offside, number 11. Defense lined up in the neutral zone. That's a five yard penalty. Second down. It's Jalen Samuels for SMU. And now making this a second and four. You know, the last drive, obviously, Oklahoma leaned on SMU, ran the ball right, th right at them all the way down the field. This is the spot on the field where I think about play action, take a shot over the top, get it to somebody like an Andre Anthony, Jalil Farqua, somebody like that. Tight formation running over the left side. This is Walker. Now going back to Walker's story, we talked about how he was away from football for a year, started his junior college route at Palomar, and then had an opportunity to arrive here in Norman, walked on to Oklahoma in the spring of 2022, had a tough year last year, a little bit of tough love coaching from DeMarco Murray, the running back coach. But Walker has put in the time both during the spring and this recent fall camp. And two games in, he has become a factor in this backfield. No doubt, but well, what a response there from SMU. OU tries to go quarterback draw, run right at SMU. Dylan Gabriel has to bounce it. Swarming tackling there from the ponies gets them off the field, and now plenty of time left like you alluded to. They'll have the ball back with three minutes and change. An opportunity to get points before half. Bearcats signal four at the 13-yard line. Let's take a look at our Phillips 66 upcoming schedule. Phillips 66 ready to go. And Oklahoma will be going. First road trip of the year next week. They take on Tulsa, and then they open up what will be their final run through the Big 12 with a trip to Cincinnati. Trips to Cincinnati, obviously the big one there on October 7th in Dallas. I think that the sneaky part of this schedule is there as the calendar turns to November. Two back-to-back -back road games in conference. I think those are where your, your body's banged up, you're tired. I think that's going to be the critical piece of this schedule for the Sooners. Simu goes to work. Spin move there by Knighton and a good surge. There's some of the footwork from Jalen Knighton, a first down run of 11. Good opening play, trying to get some forward momentum on this drive. 
Like we mentioned, plenty of time here. Just the one timeout, though, for SMU as they try to get something to create some momentum before half. New rule in college football. Clock doesn't stop after a first down unless it's the final two minutes of each half. Wide open, finding a hole in the zone is Dixon. Up ahead past the 40, marked down at the 43, a gain of 20. And Oklahoma's very fortunate that Preston Stone is working to the left on this. They had Moochie Dixon and Jake Bailey open on that last play. Stack up the receivers at the top. They swing it out to the flats, making a catch as Knighton. Nippy little move, and then he gets popped by Stutzman. The two linebackers hitting him. Canning took him low. Stutzman finished him high. And we talked about Billy Bowman bringing the hat. Danny Stutzman as well. What an absolute pop on Jalen Knighton. Good-looking drive, little pitch play to the boundary side. And again, it is Knighton crossing the Sooner side to the 48. Stutzman again, along with Woody Washington. And this feels like every drive for SMU, doesn't it? They get to midfield, they get to a third and short. So far, not so good on third down, creating those fourth downs. See if they can convert here. OU defense pinches up the middle. That's the direction they want to go. And Stutzman, three consecutive tackles. Knighton landed awkwardly he kind of got uncorked there as Stutzman came high on him they are going to move the chains picking up just enough in a first down right was a little bit slow to get up as he's coming off the field now big third down conversion for SMU again that midfield third and short they've had such a hard time converting those Sooners rotating some bodies up front Oklahoma State transfer, Trace Ford, big number 31 in, downing the other. Play fake, Stone floats right, throws that direction. Incomplete. Good coverage on the back end for Oklahoma, and really it's probably better for SMU that this was incomplete. That defenders in position. Jaron Canick was in a really nice spot. If this ball is caught, it's probably a tackle for loss. Taylor, as you brought up, this has been the part of the field where SMU has just stalled out a little bit for Rhett Lashley. And a part of that is Oklahoma's just done a really nice job swarm tackling, getting to the ball. Hasn't been really any yards after catch or broken tackles from the Sooners. Seventh play of this drive, safety blitz. Stone gets rid of it in time, and he has his man, Keyshawn Smith, with the catch and a first down. Clock will stop now inside two minutes to move the chance. It's a veteran-style thrown for Preston Stone. He's got somebody coming right at him, stands in there, delivers the football. 13-yard throw and catch. Max protection, and Stone just forced to throw it away. Good coverage again. SMU right now is leaving in an extra either a tight end or the running back to try and max protect some. It's just allowing for two and three man route combinations and right now the guys are just not getting open. It's good coverage on the back end. Nowhere to go with the football and another good decision by Preston Stone. Don't force something when you don't need to. You've got a good drive going here. He has showed his composure. Here tonight in this first half. Trying to orchestrate a light scoring drive. They want to set up that little bubble screen, but the Sooners sniffed it out. Nowhere to go. Man, what a series here for Danny Stutzman. You said it. Danny Stutzman makes this play. SMU has him accounted for. He just beats the block and blows this play up. Sets up another third and long as the clock is rolling. SMU not in a hurry. We get close to 30 seconds left in this half. Third downs have not been kind for SMU. Three of nine tonight. Sooners rush only three. Time for Stone, but nobody open downfield and a fourth down coming up. This is a spot on the field. Last week, Colin Rogers just one of three. He did hit a short field goal earlier today. Be interesting, this is going to be close to a 50 yard attempt. This would be a career long for Rodgers, who was so reliable last year from 45 in. His misses from a year ago, 49 twice, 52 and 53. This one from 49 on the near hash. 
kick on the way, and he pushed it right. No good. And the Mustangs come up empty one more time. It's been the story of this first half for SMU. They've moved the ball well. They're well over 200 yards of total offense, 232 in this first half, but just the three points to show for it as we take another look at it. Clearly just pushed out to the right, had the distance. But so far this season, puts him at two and four on the year. And again, SMU, it's that midfield. That's the part of the field where they're, they're stalling out on drives, really have struggled on third down. Now Oklahoma, I know it's just 13 seconds, but with the three timeouts, I think you've got to take at least one shot, see if you can move this down the field and put yourself in a position for a field goal before half. Saturday night's always a good time. Here in Norman, beautiful night. In a while since these two schools have collided. Good to see SMU and OU back on the schedule. A home and home series with these two universities. The Sooners will make the trip to Dallas and the Hilltop in 2027. Jeff Levy did not see it the same way I did. Looks like Oklahoma is content to take it into half with the 14 3 lead. First half that saw SMU outgain Oklahoma 232 to 173. But on the scoreboard, it's the Sooners up 11 here at the break. Gabriel with a couple of touchdown passes. This Sooner defense for some key stops, a couple of fourth down stops in the first half. Special teams a factor as well with the early block punt setting up the first short scoring drive for OU. Choppy really for both of these offenses. I thought it took a little longer than Oklahoma would have liked to get going. Just the 14 points in the first half. SMU really struggling to stay on the field. Let's send it down to Tori Petri for our coach's spotlight with Brent Venables. Brought Johnny, to you Coach by Venables your Oklahoma here. Coach, you had that drive GNC where your dealers. run game just pushed the ball down the field. What did you like about what you saw from your run game in this first half? Physical, changing up the, you know, the entry points, how we're running the football. And uh, we got to get back to that. That's how our offense will get in the sink. And uh, that's the strength of what we do. What do you want to see your team perfect in the second half? The yeah, just needs to play. This is, this is a great situation. A lot of different situation of football we just experienced there and a uh, lot to teach here at halftime uh, get better from and uh, again it's gonna be a 60 minute game thanks so much coach appreciate it thank you thank you Tori both of these coaches wanted to see how their teams would handle a little bit of adversity I'd say both have faced some adversity in this first half the Sooners with the 14-3 lead here at the break Packed house on a Saturday night. The Sooner certainly a lower scoring game than a lot of people thought here in Norman today. Oklahoma with a 14-3 lead over SMU at the break. Sean Kinney alongside Taylor McCargan. I'll tell you what, Taylor, this was a pretty even football game through the first half. Both defenses playing well, and we really have yet to see Oklahoma go vertical with that passing game. I think that's the biggest surprise to me in this game is just the 64 passing yards from Dylan Gabriel, and they established a presence clearly running the football, especially in that second quarter, but I think that was surprising, and then also SMU just struggling on third down, just 3 of 10. That clearly is what's limiting them right now. They get a chance right now with the ball coming out of half, but they've got to get some third down conversions. Both teams really struggled on third down in the first half. Talked about how even this football game is. SMU 3 of 10 on third down, OU 3 of 7. Neither team committed a turnover. Each team secured 11 first downs. What's SMU need to do? Let's find out. Let's swing it back down to Torrey. Sean, I talked to Rhett Lashley, and he said he feels like they played a really good first half of football. He liked the way they moved the ball. He was happy with what he saw from Preston Stone. They just have to find ways to put, put six points on the board at the end of those drives. He was very happy talking about his defense. He says he feels like the score would be a lot different if it weren't just for that blocked punt. Year number two at SMU for Rhett Lashley. And what an eight days it's been. We really haven't talked about it. You know, last Friday announcing to his team that they will be joining the ACC next fall and then having his team take care of business on the hilltop. And now the old 
flea flicker to get things started, but Oklahoma not biting as Stone goes awkwardly into the SMU bench. Again, such a disciplined defense, trying to reach into the bag of tricks to mix it up to start this second half. Preston Stone really should have thrown this away, ends up taking a two-yard loss. But you're exactly right, Sean. Just a two-man route concept, really. And OU staying at home, they've done that all night on some of these gadget plays that SMU's drawn up. They have not bit at all on the back end, a credit to this secondary. Quick throw, playmaker Jake Bailey with the catch, makes one sooner miss. See the frustration with Justin Harrington trying to pump up his troops. Harrington, who was dinged up in the first half, good to see him back out there. It's interesting, both of these offenses have such good screen game. That means you know these defenses see it week in and week out in practice. And these DBs are used to having to shed blocks on the perimeter and rally to the football, make a good open field tackle like you just saw there from the Sooners secondary. Third down, they bring a blitz off the edge. Stutzman with the pressure up the middle. Stone forced to get rid of it early. They had the running back from the check down. Oklahoma brings a blitz from the boundary. Nobody picks up the running back. Preston Stone having to give a little bit of ground. He's got Tyler Levine right in the middle of the field. If he can put it on him right now, there's a chance. Levine can turn around, maybe pick up the first down. A three and out instead for the Ponies and OU with the chance to get the ball back early. That's a real tough assignment for the center. Branson Hickman with space up the middle trying to slow down the blitzing Stutzman. Never got a hand on him. Buchevsky barely gets the punt away. Freeman with the fair catch. So the Oklahoma defense picks up where they left off in the first half. They force a quick three and out, 44-yard punt. SMU with the advantage in the total yard category. A lot of those yards coming via the air. Oklahoma the got kick, hot on the ground. Holding, number 22 in that second quarter team, running the football. From the end in of the particular, first down, OU. Mr. Walker, the 69 rushing yards, which was key for Oklahoma. Hold there, pushes this back to the 20 for Oklahoma. But you said it, Sean, the, the just 64 yards passing for an offense. And look, I understand. Arkansas State's defense last week, that's not the same defense they're playing this week. There's more talent here from SMU, there's no doubt. But I don't think anybody expected Dylan Gabriel to have less than 100 yards passing in the first half. And they're certainly going to have to find some of those explosives in the downfield passing game here early. Five of those completions to the Michigan transfer, Andrell Anthony. Let's see if they get that passing game cranked up. They'll swing it out. And up ahead past the 20 to the 26, a flag flies. Walker makes the catch, but I think this one's coming back. Yeah, this is going to be a block in the back on Drake Stoops. Brandon Crossley from that nickel corner position does a good job winning across the face of Drake Stoops, who pushes him in the back right in front of the official. They're having a conversation about it right now. It looked close. I thought this could have gone either way. They threw the flag. The field judge coming in could see maybe they wave this off. We'll see if there is stands. no foul for illegal block in the back. There you go. Number 12 remained in position. It'll be second down. And it was close. Brandon Crossley got across the face of Drake Stoops. I thought at the last second, maybe there was a shove in the back. And clearly the umpire thought the same thing. Wiped away. Look on the left side of the screen. Watch 12 right here. It's close. It, again, I think that could have gone either way, but Credit to the officials getting together, having a conversation about it. Let's pick up a six on first down. Gabriel will dump it off underneath. Back-to-back -back catches for Walker up to the 39. 12 more yards. And some of this with the checkdowns from Dylan Gabriel is just that SMU is not giving them anything on the back end. There's not open shots to take right now. Pressure forces Gabriel from the pocket. He'll go into a protective slide up to the 45. Tempo again. OU's moving quick, getting close to midfield. It's preventing any fresh bodies from getting out there for SMU. Walker cannot run away from the tackle. That's Brandon Crossley. Fourth year player, started his career at Colorado State. Actually, 
originally in high school, committed to SMU, then at the last second changed his mind, went out to Fort Collins, been a year out there before realizing he wanted to get back home to Dallas. We've got a full defensive line change here. Some of the big boys come in as they see the personnel grouping with Jackson Arnold in a quarterback. So the second play of the game for Arnold, and he will try to use his legs to drive ahead. And this is going to be real close. I think off the initial spot, he's going to be short. I think you're right, about a yard short. Interesting again, just seeing Jackson Arnold used in this short yardage scenario, staying on the field here on this fourth and short. Fourth down, up the middle, first down, bouncing to the outside, and the Sooners convert. It looks like they put it right on the 48-yard line, which is what they needed for the big first down. First down is brought to you by Paycom. Score big by letting employees do their own payroll. Learn more at Paycom.com. Gabriel with all sorts of time. Now he'll throw on the run, and Freeman a rare drop. Dylan Gabriel is going to be mad at himself when he looks at this on tape. Austin Stogner comes open right away. You can't see it on this look. This Gavin Freeman really should have come down with that ball, but the big tight end, number 81, Austin Stogner, gets turned loose right away. It was the side of the field that Dylan Gabriel was working. You could even hear the crowd on that side of the field. I think everybody recognized 81 running by himself and just a miss there from Dylan Gabriel. Yeah, Stogner yet to get a catch this season. Blake Smith, the other tight end with a touchdown catch earlier. Well, right on cue, Stogner gets the call here and is tackled by Jonathan McGill, a gain of four. Stogner in his second stint back in the Crimson and Cream after going away for a year to South Carolina. Missed the environment. Sometimes you, you don't realize you missed something until you're gone, and that was the case with him. Now a conservative call on third down, and this SMU defense forces a decision for Brent Venables. A little bit of a restless crowd at that play call. Third and eight, third and seven, running the ball in the interior. It is a questionable play call. I thought at the midfield point, if you're going to go for it on fourth down, no problem, but set yourself up for success. Try and pick up some of that to get it to a fourth and short. Instead, good job by SMU limiting that run. Now the punt team on the field for Oklahoma. Luke Elzinga on the punt. Left footed kicker. It's an angled up high into the air. Fair catch signal for it by McGill and SMU starting deep in their own end. Venables feeling confident with the way his defense is playing, playing a little field position game early in this third quarter. Sooner Vision Football on ESPN Plus is presented by Mathis Home, the official furniture sponsor of OU Athletics. Upgrade your palace and shop now at Mathis Home. Com. A good one here at Oklahoma. Sooners up 14-3. Preston Stone. All the success coming out of Parrish High School in Dallas, but he had to wait for his time. Sat behind Tanner Mordecai last year. Mordecai this offseason transferred over to Wisconsin, and those two had such a wonderful relationship. And Preston so appreciative for all that Tanner did for him and the communication that those two had a season ago and now Stone finally given the keys to this offense and a key drive early in this third quarter as they try to get something established offensively. And this is a guy Preston Stone, I mean it came down to SMU in Texas and his recruitment and you talked about how loyal he was and that this is a family affair and his brother being on staff, they live 15 minutes away from campus. All of that played into him staying on campus, obviously. But if you ask SMU fans, they also feel like this was an upgrade for all the great things that Tanner Mordecai accomplished. They feel like they really have the guy now that's going to take them to the next level, especially in the ACC. Play clock down the three on the snap. Stone will put some air to it. Throws this deep ball so nicely in a first down. That's Brinson with a second the catch. Field. It's a completed pass for first down. 
really nice timing on this, trying to throw the corner route between the safety and the corner, trying to negotiate those two defenders. Really nice timing for a good chunk play. 17 yards, they quick pitch it to the outside with Knighton. Brett Lashley went to the transfer portal this offseason. 17 key players brought in via the portal. Jalen Knighton, one of them. A lot of Miami Hurricanes, former Canes, now on that SMU sideline as they followed Rhett Lashley, their former OC. These personnel changes are slowing down the tempo that SMU wants. Second down, trying to bounce to the outside, and there's the speed of Knighton. Into the second wave, stripped of the ball, it's loose, picked up by Oklahoma. Stutzman grabbed it. This looks like a great play from Key Lawrence from his safety spot. Tracking down Jalen Knighton. Reaches his hand in. Watch on the left side of the screen. Right here. Punches that ball out. What a good play by Key Lawrence. And then also the wherewithal from Danny Stutzman to keep his body in bounds. How often do you see a ball get close to the sideline like that? A defender comes flying in, grabs the ball, and goes out of bounds, and then the offense retains possession. Really good two individual effort from two guys there, Key Lawrence and also Danny Stutzman. And SMU again shooting themselves in the foot at about the same spot in the field. Something about when they get near that OU logo at the midfield point, they either can't convert a third down or they turn the ball over. Huge play for the Sooners. Taylor, incidentally enough, Knighton actually, textbook-wise, did the right thing. You saw him switch it to the outside arm, and still it gets poked away by Lawrence. The Tennessee transfer. First takeaway by the Sooner D. Gabriel will have to whip it out toward the flats. Bowie Walker, who's been active, up ahead for three to the 42. Let's see here if this is the drive where OU is able to capitalize on some sort of downfield explosive play in the passing game. One thing watching Walker, you love his point of attack. It, it seems like he is such a good downhill vertical runner that he's looking for that contact when he hits the hole. There's no doubt he's five foot nine. As you see him get loose here, pick up a big first down. He's five foot nine, almost 220 pounds. When you're that low to the ground and that solid, it's difficult to bring him down, and he'll square up against defensive linemen and linebackers in the hole and still lean forward for extra yards. Big number 29 with that special relationship with the OU running back coach, DeMarco Murray. Both of those backs from the Las Vegas area in the desert, so they have had a tight bond, and we talked about it. Some tough love last year. Now Walker really blossoming. And from that second quarter to now, it's been very clear what the Sooners approach is. They're going to run the ball right at SMU and wear them down. You're seeing it again here, clipping along at four to five yards a pop and leaning on this SMU D line. Andrew Rame controlling the middle at his center position, and now the speed of Barnes, Javante slicing and dicing. Up ahead to the 36, Chris Adamora the tackle. Got two downs to play with here. Austin Stogner in on the right side. Wonder if you get some sort of quick play action here. Fake the jet sweep on that RPO type motion. It is Gabriel upended. Good job there by the former Sooner, Corey Roberson, who spent three years here in Norman. Another fourth down. Like I said, I would have liked if you're going to go for it on fourth down, two to play, two downs to play with there. Would have liked some sort of play action. Now we see Jackson Arnold back in the game, and what's become a theme in this game short yardage, fourth down, and short. We see Arnold in the game. Expect quarterback run game here. They go empty set. Sooners load up their two tight ends to the right. Arnold up the middle, first down, and then some. Jackson Arnold. Another look at it. Nothing special about this, just running right at this SMU defense, like we've talked about. Jackson Arnold back off the field, Dylan Gabriel back in. Another long sustained drive, wearing out this SMU defensive line. Arnold's senior year at Geyer, he threw for over 3,400 yards, but he rushed for nearly 1,000. 
Oklahoma back to the air. Stoops with his first catch. Tight roping the sideline. Good gain on first down. And the bellowing of Stoops from this crowd inside Memorial Stadium. A guy that everybody, fans, players, everybody in this program loves this guy. Somebody that you lean on, you look to, your young guys, you want them to try and look up to somebody like that, emulate him and what he puts forward as a teammate. Stoops has now caught passes from eight different quarterbacks in his six years here in Oklahoma. It's like a third and short coming up as the Sooners are inside the red zone. SMU slow to get somebody on late. Yeah, they were late getting that 11th player out there, and this is Walker trying to surge his way past the big arms of DeVere Levelston. Another fourth and short, and we see Jackson Arnold come back in, and here he comes. I don't think too many people scripted this is the way that Jackson Arnold was going to make his Oklahoma debut through these first couple of games. No, but I tell you what, this crowd loves it when he checks into the game. Fourth and a yard, right back to that winning recipe. It is Arnold up the middle and another chain mover for the Sooners. This one looks close on the top, the official to the top of the field, yeah, closer to the play side. Now, this is going to be closer than I thought. Not a real great spot. Oklahoma upset along their sideline. Rhett Lashley and company thinking maybe they got to stop as we take another look. Trying to get to the 18 yard line. I, that's close. I, I'm not sure that that ball got there. He's got it in the right arm. And when that left hip goes down, it's certainly from where the chain is right now to the 18 yard line, it's short. I know it they're going to measure this, but this is going to be short. If we go back and take another look at that, he doesn't extend the ball. I think this may end up being the correct call. Big, big stretch of the chains, and as we thought, short, and SMU's defense comes up with a red zone stop. Oh, my. This Mustang defense knew they had to approve the physicality from a year ago. I'd say job well done here in Norman. Welcome back to Norman, where SMU is just about to take over on offense. SMU offensive coordinator Casey Woods, as well as their head coach, has some interesting connections to the coaching staff over at Oklahoma. Those two were GAs on the Auburn staff when Ted Roof was the defensive coordinator during that Auburn National Championship season. Let me set the scene for a really funny story between these two coaches. It was spring practice in 2009 at Auburn. Casey Woods was giving Gus Malzahn down and distance info during a scrimmage, and every now and then he'd pick up on a play signal from then Auburn defensive coordinator Roof, pass it to Gus Malzahn, and Roof's getting real frustrated with him. There comes a play where, as Woods tells it, Roof brought a corner blitz. The offense threw a screen over top of the blitz. Boom, 75 yards for a touchdown. He says Roof absolutely lost his mind. That is not how Roof remembers it, though. He says that blitz got home, guys. Yeah, we had two completely different versions. All the facts mixed up, and it depends on what corner you go to yeah. on the truth. Let, me, let me tell you something. Every defensive staff in the world schemes up their own offense, whether they tell you they are or not. That sounds exactly like a couple coaches. The, the same story, it's like playing telephone. It's different from everybody that you ask. Casey Woods in this SMU offense trying to figure out Ted Roof in this Sooner D right now. Stone throws a strike. It is Dixon with the catch up to the 32. A gain of 11 and a first down. SMU clearly still very much in this game. Their defense standing on their head in short yardage against Oklahoma right now. This is a huge drive for them. Three minutes and change left in this third quarter. They can drive down the field and get a touchdown on the board. All of a sudden, you really start to make Oklahoma nervous. And they really have an opportunity here if they can get points. So offensive line for SMU. They lost Justin Osborne early in this game at right guard. Penetration right off the snap that time. And Key Lawrence is certainly making some plays in this second half. SMU likes to tag with that motion. They brought Jake Bailey in motion. If they pull the ball, which Preston Stone is reading that defensive end, if you pull it, that motion receiver is running in the flat. And a couple times now, Jake Bailey has been open Interested to see, does Preston Stone here soon pull that ball, flip it to Jake Bailey in the flat, because I think there's a play to be made there. 
Stone, who has one of the best deep arms in college football, but the Sooners have taken away that part of the game tonight. Second down and 11. Good protection. Fires too tall, incomplete. He was looking for Curley. Jordan Curley just the two catches a week ago. Woody Washington, a top cover corner for OU, blanketing him. Preston Stone had him. Jordan Curley working back on the curl route. It's good coverage by Woody Washington. He's in good position. I like the timing on when Preston Stone got the ball out of his hand. Just need to get that down some. These third downs have been a killer for SMU tonight. Keep your eye on the nickel corner. Does he blitz? This is a look OU likes to pressure from. He does not, but they do run a stunt. Stone running for his life, still looking downfield, throws on the run, and coming back to the ball is Curley. Rolling on the field is a completed pass. This is First such down, a great job by Jordan SMU. Curley. Work back to your quarterback. This is the scramble drill rules for everybody. If you're deep, you come back shallow, and that applies to Jordan Curley. Work back to your quarterback and give him a chance Really accurate throw there for Preston Stone. Keep this drive alive. How about the poise of the sophomore just keeping his eyes downfield. Tyler Levine, the big bam bam as they call. Neck roll and all, he gets up near midfield. Love that nickname from the Army transfer. Had an injury in basic when he first got to Army. As a guy, a captain for this offense, somebody that they look to to set the tempo. Brett Lashley called him one of the MVPs of the team last year as SMU made it all the way into the bowl season and Levine was their main guy down the stretch the team's leading rusher. A little bit of a different role for him this year with the addition of both Johnson and Knight. Second down give cutting back up the middle spinning ahead for a few is Gardner and stop me if you've heard this before third and short and SMU's at midfield. What do they have here to try and get over the hump, extend this drive, and at a minimum, push into manage manageable field goal range? Danny Stutzman, double-digit tackles tonight. This crowd coming to their feet again. Closing moments of this third quarter. Gardner in motion. They fake the jet sweep, and that did not fool anyone. Staying at home was Jacob Lacey. Awesome play by Jacob Lacey. Shedding a block, winning at the point of attack. And same thing we've seen all game. SMU, I think they're going to talk about this as we go to the fourth quarter. But man, at some point, got to convert one of these third or fourth downs. Brett Lashley has brought his team to play this hard hitting Sooner defense for the second straight week. Tough to get yards on. A good one as we head to the fourth in Norman. Welcome back to Sooner Vision Football on ESPN Plus, presented by Mathis Home, the official furniture sponsor of OU Athletics. Upgrade your palace and shop now at MathisHome.com. Alongside Taylor McCarr, Tory Petri down on the sideline, Sean Kenny, and a good one as we march to the fourth quarter here in Norman, Oklahoma, for the second straight week with a suffocating defense and a fourth down coming up for the Mustangs in the nightmare part of the field tonight for the road white. Stone looks, throws, contact downfield, and a flag flies. Daniels got tied up. And SMU is going to pick up the first down. And I thought Jaron Kanick was in a good spot, but he panicked. Grabbed at the last second. I didn't think he needed to. Officials having another conversation about this. I, I thought this was clear P.I. We'll see if this stands. Pass interference, number seven. Defense, 15-yard penalty automatic, first down. And again, I thought he was in pretty good position. Working right here. Grabs right at the top, and it's clear. I think that's an easy call. If he just flips his hips, get the guys back to the quarterback, run with the receiver, didn't think he needed to, but 
keeps the drive alive for SMU, and maybe that's the break that they finally needed. It's not a third down conversion, but still on the field. Canick was a incredible quarterback in high school, player of the year from the state of Kansas, second year at linebacker, first year in that starting lineup, and now they run the reverse, getting to speed on the edge with Dixon, but look at the pursuit. Key Lawrence, the first one there, Stutzman and Bowman finished him off. Key Lawrence flying downhill and not fooled by this at all. Go back to right out of half. Saw a flea flicker. Now we've got a reverse here. There's been a couple plays, gadget plays that SMU clearly had that they worked on all week. They wanted to try and implement this. And to this point, ODU hasn't been, as you saw, I love the finger wag of Matumbo, no, 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 from Danny Stutzman. That's exactly what this off this defensive unit from OU has been saying all night. These trick plays, these gadget plays that SMU is running, they're not falling for them. SMU substitutes. That allows Oklahoma to get some fresh bodies. Rondell Bothroy, the transfer from Wake, into the game. Second down up the middle, and there's a hole. And look at the run by Knighton as he stumbles his way up near the 20. But there is a flag down along the Oklahoma sideline. This came in late from the line judge in an area where the play really wasn't affected by his side of the field. After the play, sideline interference, Oklahoma. Half the distance to the goal, it's first down. And this crowd is, we said, restless earlier, really getting restless now. SMU gets well into the red zone. How big would it be here, Sean, if they could finally punch in, get their first touchdown of the game? This Oklahoma defense is not allowed a touchdown through the first seven quarters of the season. SMU 11 yards away from changing that. Mustangs can still pick up a first down. They will hand it off, trying to get Daniels free. Stutzman, that ball popped free late. Stutzman, another tackle. Now 16 tackles in this game for the Big 12's leading tackler from a year ago. One of the things Butch Jones said after Arkansas State loss was we had no idea just how fast Oklahoma was, especially on the defensive side. And you're seeing that anytime there's any sort of misdirection or reverse, Oklahoma's team speed is just too good. They're too fast. They're beating SMU to the point of attack. And the times that SMU's had success is really running right at them, which is surprising. Both Oklahoma coordinators saying it's night and day difference team speed last year to this year for their Sooners. They try to stick with the ground. Night and minimal gain, twisted forward for two. I don't think, unless they pick up a good chunk here, I don't think this is four down territory because you need points to get it to one score. Then you just need touchdown two point conversion. I don't think this would be two down territory from here unless they could pick up a good chunk and get this well inside the five yard line. Stone, Sooners rush four, little air to the throw, flag down. They were looking for Maryland. That big body and the freshman Peyton Bowen got all tied up with them. And will the drive continue for the second time on this series? Pass interference, number 22. Defense, that foul occurred in the end zone. The ball be placed at the two yard line. Automatic first down. And, and I know the fans hate it, but it's the right call. We miss it here, but that left hand gets on the back of R.J. Maryland. It's right there, pulls him back towards him. I, I know OU fans hate the call, especially where it was, but it was the right call. Levine is the big back. He's a decoy, wide open, front of the end zone, touchdown, SMU. Two pass interference penalties from Oklahoma extend this drive, and SMU makes them pay for it. And now it looks like the offense is staying on the field. Saw him originally signaling going for two. We'll see if that ends up being the case. We take another look at it. 
simple play fake. Good job by Preston Stone giving ground. You got a wide open receiver, a fullback rather, just put it on him. And SMU finally punching in, getting their first touchdown of the game as we will see a two point attempt here from SMU. Stone Aby normally opening up hole from that time. He found his way to the front of the end zone and the Mustangs cap off a 13 play 81 yard drive and now they try to make this a field goal game. Knighton will rejoin Stone in the backfield. Two right, two left. Stone flush from the pocket, floats, and it's caught. Bailey coming back to it, holds it in, and it's a three-point game. What a job by Preston Stone. OU brings pressure. They blitz him, try to heat him up. Gives enough ground and then just gives this guy a chance. Jake Bailey with a couple huge catches, none bigger than that one right there. The poise of Preston Stone. These receivers, a number of contested catches a week ago. They tack on one more here in the clutch in Norman. SMU able to pull off their longest drive of the night and it came in a clutch moment. Stone Eby, the big blocking back, able to catch the touchdown. And then look at this poise under duress by Preston Stone, the soft touch to Bailey. And just like that, it's now a three-point game. And Taylor, you go back to that red zone fourth down stop by the SMU defense that set it up. They've saved them this whole game because the offense, like we've talked about, they've sputtered SMU offense at midfield with can't get over the hump on third downs. And really the defense that stop that you alluded to how important was that to get the ball back create some momentum for SMU and then those two defensive pass interference penalties for Oklahoma extending drives one on fourth down one on third and long SMU finally gets their first touchdown of the night now it's just a one score game quiet night for Dylan Gabriel as he'll try to get things started first down from the 25 pressure comes he's forced to dump nifty little move by Walker up to the 30 35 track down from behind but a gain of 12 Cameron Robertson finally able to bring him down this drive summary brought to you by Fowler Auto Group being friendly helpful honest and fair this is what drives us see the Sooners in that third quarter Long drive ending inside the SMU red zone. They went nine plays, 31 yards. So a quiet quarter offensively as they try to get things started. And when they've had success throwing, it's been Anthony. First down catch by the Michigan transfer right back to the ground with Walker. This looks more like what we expected and certainly what we saw last week. Getting on the ball, quick completions, get it out of Dylan Gabriel's hands quickly. Couple chunk plays and now like you see, they're already on the other side of midfield. Second and six, Gabriel on the slant ball, tipped, and it falls incomplete. It's hit the that. same play they scored on earlier. It is, and they just hit that play a second ago on this drive. It's very simple play action, throw the slant in behind it. It's got all these bodies in the middle. Good job by Brian Massey getting his hands up. Also Ahmad Walker, the Liberty transfer. Walker and Magison both came over. Scott Simons, the defensive coordinator, both those players, Warriors starters at Liberty. Third down for the Sooners. SMU moving their players around. Now they bring a blitz off the edge. Perfect play call. OU runs the opposite way. And picking up the first down is Marcus Major inside the 30 to the 28. 18 yards. Perfect play call by Jeff Levy. They caught SMU in a field blitz and just ran away from it. Look at all the bodies they have coming from the field. SMU does. OU says fine. Even on a third and medium, we'll just run zone away from it. Sooners roaring right back up to the line. Throw along the sideline is caught. Anthony holds it in. That's his seventh catch of the night. One of the things that we saw a lot of from Arkansas State when they played Arkansas State last week was max protection, leaving a tight end, having a running back in seven man protection and just throwing two or three man route concepts for the shot plays. We haven't seen any of that tonight from Oklahoma. Fake the jet sweep. 
Over the middle, wide open, caught, touchdown, Marcus Major. There's the response the Sooners were looking for as we have a penalty at the 20 yard line. Officials getting together. Ineligible player downfield, number 60. Offense, five yard penalty, second down. Killer. When you finally, Oklahoma in this second half, finally get something going, build some momentum. Simple, silly penalty. We take a look, and I'm not sure what Tyler Guyton is doing. All four, and you see him sprint back. It's just a bust. And those are the things that, as a redshirt junior guy that transferred from TCU, he's played enough football. You cannot have those kind of busts it wipes away a scoring play. Talked about the Sooners losing their two tackles to the NFL, the both Morris and Harrison. Short gain here to the 26. Man alive, the penalties just crushing Oklahoma in this fourth quarter. The good news here, still opportunity on this third down. Can they pick up enough? Would expect to see if it's fourth and short that we get Jackson Arnold back in the game for short yardage. Stogner and Anthony. The two to the left. Two receivers to the top. That's the direction. Little slant. Stoops hangs on to it. And a first down. The reliable Drake Stoops able to reach in and pull it away from Kale Sanders. He is so reliable. Quarterback's favorite type of receiver, that inside slot receiver, where you put it on him right now, get the slant to him, and pick up the third down. Major stays in the game at running back. Play fake into the corner end zone stoops nearly pulled it in tried to reel it in with the one hand again that matchup of kale sanders and drake stoops going toe to toe take another look at this just a slot fade it's really put in a pretty decent spot good coverage from kale sanders Freeman has now replaced Stoops as the slot. And Oklahoma shooting themselves in the foot False again. start, number 75. Offense, five-yard penalty, second down. There's two massive tackles, Taylor. Trading penalties here between Tyler Guyton on the ineligible man downfield and then Walter Rouse there on the false start. You said it, that's four penalties in this fourth quarter. Two on the defensive side that kept the drive alive for SMU's offense, and two here that's keeping off OU behind the sticks. Tenth play of the drive, and the pass is caught by Farouk. Into the five, touchdown! Jalil Farouk, and the Sooners respond. Overcame a lot on that drive to get back in the end zone, extend this to a two-score lead again for Oklahoma. And that's the response. Look, it's not pretty right now, but you're having to overcome some adversity, and these are the things early in the season that good teams are able to do. Even when it's not pretty, what a move there in the middle by Farouk. But even when it's not pretty, you've got to respond. And that's exactly what this Oklahoma offense did on that drive. Ten plays, 75 yards. They overcome a couple of penalties on the drive as well. You mentioned that adversity. Gabriel with his third touchdown pass. Farouk has his first of the season. Tough catch. Charles Woods with the coverage. Little juke at the end. Oklahoma counter punches right back. Sooner Vision Football on ESPN Plus is brought to you by Air Comfort Solutions, your total home solution for plumbing, heating, air conditioning, and electrical. Make the winning call today. Well, that was a Heisman-like drive from Dylan Gabriel on a night in which he's been held in check for the most part. He goes five of seven for 65 yards, his third touchdown of the night his 100th career touchdown pass. Like the play calling as well, a lot of quick game, got it out of his hands quick, in breaking routes and slants, and his receivers made plays when they needed to. Mm -hmm. 
great to see these two universities come together on the gridiron. Their first meeting since 1995. Last time these two teams played in 95, Oklahoma won 24 to 10. SMU's lone victory in this series back in 1968. The Astro Blue Bonnet Bowl, a thriller in the Astrodome in Houston. SMU that year coached by the great Hayden Fry. Mustangs trying to find a little late magic on the road. Stone on a design draw. Oh, look at the footwork, and then a gasket gave out just as he was ready to make a cut. Before that play, this game was dead even, almost between time of possession and yards gained. And I think that's, for SMU, you're still in this fight, very much in this fight. You're down two scores. Took them all game to respond and get downfield with a score and a touchdown. You're going to have to do it again here to have a chance late in this game. Late change, E.B., who caught his first career touchdown a few moments ago. He's in at H-back. Maryland leaves the lineup. Bailey goes in motion. They will hand the ball off and a collision right there over that A-gap. Hit put on by Kobe McKenzie. Two terrific freshman linebackers with McKenzie and Kip Lewis. A big-time recruit making a play. Kobe McKenzie, the fre redshirt freshman from Lubbock. First time we've had a chance to call his name tonight. Big third down again for SMU. Stone giving ground, back foot throw, 50 50 ball broken up. Brinson, the target. Walker, the PBU. Yeah, Romello Brinson's looking for a call there. I thought this was good coverage and an answer here from Oklahoma. Pressure in his face again. Rondell Rothroyd, Bothroyd, excuse me, the Wake Forest transfer. A big response there for OU to get off the field. Down 10, Lashley keeps the offense on the field. Excuse me, not off the field yet. SMU potentially going for it deep in their own territory. Fourth and five, Stone darts it. Dangerous throw, and it's broken up. Bowen, the freshman who blocked the punt earlier, comes up with a key breakup. A couple big freshmen making impact plays on that drive. The Sooner defense late here in the fourth quarter. Welcome back to the sidelines in Norman, where I am joined by a special guest, big Sooner fan, Toby Keith. Toby, real exciting fourth quarter down here. What have you thought of the Sooners so far this season? Well, good team we're playing, and we're trying to rebuild our squad, get the SEC, but we're playing great. We just scored, so we're happy, so it's all good. Last year in the Big 12, what are your expectations for this team this year? Big 12 championship. That's what Bob did. That's what we did for years. So we own the Big 12. And uh, we got to beat Texas, a couple other teams, and then we'll we'll just we'll get there. But uh, Brent's we all have faith in Brent. And uh, this is a really good squad we're playing. They got a lot of portals in here. Division, you know, top division cats. But uh, we're gonna be all right. A lot of Sooner fans are Toby Keith fans. Give us an update on how you're feeling lately. Well, it's cancer's an up and down roller coaster, and you you get a good report, bad report. You just have to fight it every day. Almighty's riding shotgun. Uh, tell us a little bit about what you're working on right now, and and what's up, upcoming for you. I'm gonna try to go on tour in November, December, and get back out there, and I'm just gonna live it. We look forward to seeing it. Thank you. Appreciate right. it. Thank you, Tori, and certainly our prayers with Toby as he continues his battle with cancer. Great to see him on the sideline and he talked about the dominance of OU in this Big 12 their final go around they have won more than half of the Big 12 football championships since that league began back in 96 incredible success in Big 12 championship games 11 and 1 during that time look at the moves by major high stepping his way to six that's how fast it can happen with this Oklahoma offense 
quiet for most of the second half, and then boom, back-to-back -back drives. You get a short field, take advantage of it. What an individual effort from Marcus Major, and watch downfield blocking by Andre Anthony and also from Drake Stoops. Love that out of your receivers. Back-to-back -back quick scores from the Sooners. Second time tonight, Oklahoma uses a short porch. Three plays, 30 yards. Marcus Major, the veteran of the stable of running backs for the Sooners. He has sat behind some good backs in recent years. Of course, Eric Gray last year. Kennedy Brooks, Ramondre Stevenson, all ahead of Marcus Major, but now his time to shine. Loaded at depth at the running back position. Major finds the end zone. The Sooners creating a little separation. 14 unanswered by Oklahoma. Wasn't that long ago SMU had cut this down to three, but the Sooners have responded. This drive summary brought to you by Fowler Auto Group, being friendly, helpful, honest, and fair. This is what drives us. And Taylor, you look at that key 10 play, 75 yard drive. The touchdown to Farouk, able to overcome a couple of penalties. They finally got on the right side of the sticks on that drive two series ago, and then clearly took advantage. Quick three play drive for the touchdown just a moment ago. And unless SMU has a quick response, this one's likely out of hand. Ryan Massey let that ball bounce, and that was a mistake. And now a sea of crimson swarms him. Got it. SMU. Let's take another look at this. Letting the ball bounce here and really just hoping that it's like a pitching wedge that checks up and spins back. <laughs> really an unfortunate break there from SM for SMU. My pitching wedge doesn't spin anyway. I know that. <laughs> been a good night for Preston Stone 221 yards the one touchdown has not turned it over empty set OU will drop eight into coverage Stone little underneath pattern caught by Maryland up ahead to the 12 he has had a good night Preston Stone has it to steal the, the words from Toby Keith this is a talented SMU team they played well tonight looks like unlikely that they're gonna come back and win this game but this is gonna be a team that watch out for in the American Conference with a chance to win that conference in their last year there. Yeah, what a story that would be a program hungry for their first conference championship in nearly four decades. You have to go back to 1984. Southwestern Conference last time SMU won a conference shared it that year with Houston. And again, unless SMU pulls off a major comeback here, they're going to clearly point back to these third downs tripped up look at that backside pursuit great job by Kip Lewis we talked about McKenzie earlier well now it's Lewis's turn and this defense for the Sooners has bowed up late in this game especially in the fourth quarter when they needed it most have given up close to 350 yards of total offense solid performance but the biggest piece again getting off the field on third and fourth down as it looks like Rhett Lashley wants to time out Timeout, SMU, SMU 5.15 to play, fourth quarter. Sooners in control. No choice but to go for it for Rhett Lashley. Fourth and a yard, and the play blown dead. Prior to the snap, Oklahoma has called their first charge. Timeout, this will be a 30-second timeout. Sooners spotting something that they were uncomfortable with wanted to get a look at what SMU was going to take out. Don't need all the timeouts at this point in the game. That's what head coach Brent Venables thought. You know, for Oklahoma, again, the fourth quarter to me, what stood out most is their defense's ability to flex when it mattered most. They gave up the touchdown where they had the two big penalties that were disappointing. But they flexed when they mattered most. They got off the field, and then their offense 
They had really sputtered in the third quarter, but those two touchdowns, one where they drove almost the length of the field, and the second one, the quick strike, three plays, bouncing back when you needed to against a pretty good SMU team. I think as the season plays on, we will realize more and more, this is a really talented SMU program. Well coached, well disciplined. Putting up a fight here tonight on the road. Fourth and a yard. Dixon goes in motion. Sooners with initial breakthrough, but Stone again just continues to show composure. Maryland, who is quickly developing into one of his favorite third down targets, makes another catch. And a good adjustment for SMU after OU burned that timeout. They're not going to come right back and run it right at Oklahoma. They just got that look. I like the play design getting it to RJ Maryland in the flat. Mustangs stack them at the top of the screen. All sorts of time, OU rushing only three, and Stone nowhere to throw it, simply tosses it toward the Sooner sideline. Good night for Kenai Walker. Remember, we saw Gentry Williams, the starting corner, leave the game early. Walker, who created the only turnover last week in the win against Arkansas State, has made a number of plays from the opposite side corner of Woody Washington. He absolutely has played really well. I also thought Billy Bowman played nice tonight. Reggie Pearson, really good game for him. The linebacking core, Danny Stutzman, Jaron Kanick. 17 tackles for Stutzman. Here they come. Kanick in pursuit. And again, Stone forced to throw it away. It was outside the pocket. Even with leaving the running back in and sometimes the tight end trying to add a little bit of extra protection for Preston Stone. Oklahoma still getting pressure. Another third and long here for the Ponies. These two coaches on opposite sidelines making their way to the top via opposite sides of the football. Lashley, one of the highly regarded offensive minds in college football, Venables with his great defense. Third down and 10. Again, the Sooners rush three, forced to dumping it off to Levine. And flag is thrown. Levine scraping his way for a yard or two. Walker the tackle. Lewis also in to help out. Marcus Bryant, the left tackle, lost his helmet. I wonder if this is going to be hands to the face or a face mask on Oklahoma. Personal foul, hands to the face, number 34. Defense, 15 yard penalty from the end of the run, automatic, first down. Number 52 re may remain in the game due to the foul that caused the helmet to come off. That's the freshman from Kansas City, PJ Adibawue, who they are really high on. And that is a, usually a pretty easy penalty to be able to point back to and say yeah you got the call right watch 52's helmet pop off right there hard to defend that one approaching four minutes to go in this fourth quarter Jalen Knighton has had a good night combination of Knighton and Johnson are you happy to give up these four and five yard chunks right now keep everything in front you're seeing the safeties deep almost 20 yards deep at the start of the play Two by two stack on this second down play. Knighton trying to escape to the outside. Canning forced him there, and he knew he had help. Woody Washington in on the tackle. Little join back and forth. State of Texas and Oklahoma pleasantry. Seems like any time, no matter the universities, when these two schools from these two neighboring states to get, get together, <laughs> it's fun. It's a war. There is no doubt. And SMU tonight. Clearly not backing down and not been intimidated by Oklahoma and we're ready to play tonight. Stone chase caught by Downs but he got a hand up on the mask and another Sooner penalty. You know you look back at a football game Oklahoma appears to have survived tonight, but that is going to be an area of discussion and film Personal study with Venables and face company. Face mask, number 40, defense, 15-yard penalty automatic, first down. Yeah, Sean, there's no doubt. It's another personal foul, and I know the crowd is booing probably now just in frustration. It's clearly a face mask.
and that will obviously be something that Brent Venables and his staff is focused on this next week in their preparation for Tulsa because some of these penalties, it may not get you early in the year, but certainly in conference play, you give some of these teams that they have coming on the schedule later, they will beat you if you have this many critical penalties. Ethan Downs, the nonstop motor on a number of preseason awards lists, the guilty party as they get it up ahead to Gardner. Kip Lewis the stop, Gardner loses his helmet as well. Clock continues to move inside three minutes. like the screen out of the stack, and that's where they go with Maryland, who will use his size, the 235-pounder. But I think on this drive, SMU is realizing we either need to run it between the tackles, pick up four or five yards, or flip it on the outside, because OU is keeping everybody so deep, just making sure nothing is getting behind them. Making sure this drive absorbs a lot of the time. First down run, Jacob Lacey the tackle. Grayson Holt also in the stop. Four-star recruit out of California. They thought he might be heading to Oregon coming out of high school, but he changed and providing some depth behind Laulu, Co, Terry, and Kelly, the interior four. Second down. Stone throws it high and it's picked off. Harrington goes into the victory slide. Hadn't really seen a mistake like that all night for Preston Stone. Got a little bit lazy with this. Ball is high. And a nice job on the back end by Harrington. Right place, right time for the game ceiling interception. I know it wasn't always pretty on both sides of the ball for this team, but a quality win over a quality opponent. There will be a lot to learn from for Oklahoma when they turn the tape on this week. It's time now for the Air Comfort Solutions play of the game. Your total home solution for plumbing, heating, air conditioning, and electrical. Make the winning call today, and it's the touchdown to Farouk after SMU had cut it to 14-11. It's an incredible individual effort by Farouk, but it also how much it meant to this Oklahoma team when it happened. They needed some momentum back on their side. At that point in the game, it was 14 to 11, and that really sealed the deal ultimately in this game. Now, Wee Walker has had himself a night. Career highs, 21 carries, now over 110 yards. And when this Oklahoma offense was looking for something, something positive, consistent rhythm in that first half it was Walker who they turned to it was in good tough physical running so impressed with him tonight had a couple where he got loose picked up a couple of nice chunk yardage plays but a lot of it was really grinding out those four and five yard carries between the tackles first down is brought to you by Paycom score big by letting employees do their own payroll learn more at Paycom.com Couple of knees here for Dylan Gabriel, and you look at his numbers, again, very efficient. 19 of 27, nothing spectacular, 176. But what is spectacular, four touchdowns, and for the second straight week, no interceptions. No interceptions, took care of the ball. I did think play calling from Jeff Levy it was dialed in a little bit more and a little more close to the vest than we saw certainly last week against Arkansas State, but they did what they needed to do that drive where they drove down the field 75 yards. We just showed the touchdown a second ago with Jaleel Farouk. That was the one that I thought was the most important drive of the game for this offense. 80 plus thousand on a beautiful Saturday night here in September in Oklahoma. Up a couple of notches from last week's poll. Are now 2 0. Hard fought. Hard-earned win over a talented SMU team tonight on the road, 28-11. It is a good SMU team. I'll go back to that. I think this team, especially from what we saw today out of UTSA and Tulane, both of them going down, this SMU team I think is going to be right there at the end of the year in the American. And I think OU at the end of the year will look back and say that was a really good SMU team that we beat. And for Oklahoma, for all the positive press clippings they saw last week in a 73-0 win, 
you probably wanted something a little bit like this where you won, but there's so much tape that they're going to be able to go into and learn from. And the biggest thing also, Sean, got to clean up those penalties that were really killers for Oklahoma in the second half. Yeah, nine penalties tonight for Oklahoma for 78 yards. And, you know, those are penalties that came at really inopportune times for OU. Kept a couple of drives alive for SMU and saw some offensive penalties slow them down a little bit as well on the offensive side. Let's swing it down to Tori. She's with Dylan Gabriel. Thanks, Sean. Dylan, four touchdowns for you tonight. How did you feel out there today? Felt good. You know, obviously starting a little slow and uh, kind of getting away from what we do, but just love how we ended and love the adversity and how we responded. What was your run game able to give you in that first half? Shoot, hey, whatever coach needs, whatever the guys need, I I'm all about it. And, uh, you know, it's part of what we do, so I'm all about it. In that second half, obviously, score got a little tight there, but you guys were able to pull ahead. What was working for you in that second half? Just creating completions, and I think our guys making plays, and, and uh, it stacking on, on one another. So I'm proud of our guys. Love how we responded to adversity, and then, you know, coming out with the W is the, the main thing. What would you learn about your team tonight? We got a bunch of fighters, you know, adversity comes, how do you respond? And I love how they responded. So just got to get back to the drawing board and, and get better. Thanks so much, Dylan. Appreciate it. Sean, back to you. Thanks, Tori. Great work tonight. Gabriel certainly found his stride late, hitting 14 of his last 17. Oklahoma 2-0 as they get ready to continue with the American athletic theme. Their first road test next week at Tulsa. SMU returns to the hilltop to take on Prairie View. For Taylor McCard, Tori Petri, this is Sean Kinney saying so long from Norman. Well, once again, your final score is Oklahoma 28, SMU 11. All games airing on the ESPN networks are streaming live and archived on the ESPN app. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. Good night from Norman.